Hello everyone, this is GM Varakobian with 1000 GM. We're going to be analyzing the games from a uh, game from round number six, the recap video for the 2022 US Chess Championship. And the highlight game we have is going to be Neiman versus Robson. Let's take a look at the results of this round. Round number six, Wesley Saw drew against Lenier Dominguez. Fabiano Caruana defeated Elshan Muradi Abadi, grabbing the sole lead. At the moment, he's sitting very nicely with one point lead against the competition. He has, after six games, he has four and a half points. In chess language, we call that a plus three result. He has three more wins than losses, basically. Caruana has no losses, three wins and three draws. Alex Lenderman drew against Sam Shankland. Sam Savian drew against Jeffrey Shank. And Levon Arunia lost, actually. Second loss for Levon. He's having a very rough U.S. Championship debut here against Dario Schwartz. And it was a blunder that occurred in that game. It was more or less equal position. And blunder by Levon allowed Darius to get the upper hand. And then we have Avander Liang drawing a complicated game against Christopher Jung. But the highlight game is Hans Niemann. He's playing with the white pieces against Ray Robson. D4, Knight F6. C46 and Hans immediately tries to experiment. That's something off bit. The move bishop f4, bishop f4 here, you can play the move knight c3 or you can play the move knight f3. So he plays bishop f4. Now we go here. d5. C takes d5. Knight to d5. Bishop g3. C5. Attacking the center here. This is very, very important. So now uh, what black is trying to do is trying to take advantage of the fact that white played the move bishop f4 and now bishop g3. So this is what he's trying to do now, to take advantage of that. But Hans has analyzed this. As you can see, he's moving relatively quickly here. And uh, you can actually win a pawn here, but it's unclear whether or not winning this pawn is going to give you a better position because that pawn on d4 is going to be more of an obstacle here, like... So it would be something like bishop e3, let's see, 6, a3. And basically, white will have a very uh, interesting position with some attacking prospects coming up, you know. Knight e4, queen e2, rook ad1, for example. Okay. Um, yeah, this is very interesting. So let's go back now to see uh, what happened in the game. Ray, Ray actually played here. Now he's threatening to take the pawn. Uh, knight takes d4. So this way now he's ensuring that Hans will take, which was played. Knight e5. Now attacking the knight still. Again, a lot of the scores are taken, so Robson had to go here. Hans is still in prep. Look at this, 128 on the clock. At the moment he already has 30 minute advantage. Nice move a3. Stopping all the knight before businesses. Knight e4 now comes in. Putting pressure on the bishop. There's no time to retreat because if you play a retreating move after bishop d3, you're going to find yourself in a difficult position here. So, so there's no time to retreat. a5, rook c1, knight c7, bishop d3. Bishop a6. Bishop takes a6. Castle, queen a8. I mean, position is about equal. Black has uh, some good pieces. The knights are strong. Knight on d5. Potentially can go to f5. Uh, now, after... He so here you can ask me, what's wrong with just taking the pawn? Take, take, and here. Yeah, you are up a pawn, but there, there are weaknesses here on a b-file that could be put on. So, for example, rook 6 Takes, takes. Yeah, now you just play queen b6, b6, and you're putting pressure here. Lots of lots of pressure on b2. So rook e1 is played. Instead, he didn't want to that again. You know, Hans is also trying to create some chances to to have a winning chances. I think uh, part of the reason why he's losing some of these games, he's taking chances. You know, he's not just trying to play it safe. H4 now comes in, trying to trade that knight. Uh, knight takes g3. Um, if you take on h4, just simply bishop takes h4. And, uh, white has a uh, slightly better position because queen will go to g4. There will be some knight f6 ideas out there, so that's why. Takes. Bishop b7. 
Queen H5. B5. Knight F3. Rook C6. Rook C D1. Uh, Rook C2 comes in. Activating here and activating and putting pressure on F2. So at the moment, uh, what I see here is position is still about uh, equal here, but allowing the rook on c2, we see that he's taking lots of lots of chances here, okay, by doing that. Perhaps he could just play knight d4 here. That would be an idea. Knight d4 takes rook c1. Um, b4, a4. Probably exchange. It's it's going to be about the equal position here. So I expect, uh, uh, you know. But Hans, he's taking too many chances here. So even here, b3, d4, is down upon now. And again, it's not too late. It's not too late to play a little bit safer. Get the knight here first. With some some threats and try to try to liquidate, you know, and try to you know perhaps make a draw here. It's not easy already. Position is quite complicated. Um, a four takes takes queen g four. Knight takes e six. Queen is six check. And picking up on d5. F4 opening up the position. Rook a2. This is a very good move because it's always nice to have the mating ideas on g2. Always nice. And now again. It's important to get the pawn back and then put a knight on d6 and keep fighting. I mean, the block is maybe a little bit better here, but it's still it's still a fight, you know. But Hans just just goes for a all 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 out attack with f5, which unfortunately for him doesn't quite work. Block is just too solid here, and by looking at it, you can tell that this attack is just not going to work. Block is just too solid. Every PCS is very well placed. Maybe in a blitz something like this would work, but not in, not in a real, real uh, slow chess. Knight c3. Now attacking only four. If you take queen g2 is a mate, and um, queen f3 was the best attempt here, but then we have liquidations. If you take with the rook, it takes f5. Knight takes f5. Bishop c5. Check. That leads to rook f2 and lots of lots of problems. Okay, I mean you don't really have an attack here because black is just too solid, uh, and you always have the threat on g2 as well. So he played uh, f5. Uh, he went f6. It's possible because when I was uh, watching the game live. Uh, uh, when the f6 is played, it seems like uh, he overlooked uh, what is Ray, Ray's next response because, you know, he's, he's doing fine in every other line, but this particular move is just so strong because, once again, we see the reason why it's important to have the rook here because this knight simply cannot move because it's just going to get mated. Okay, it can move with the check, but otherwise just can't do anything. So it's a mate on g2. So bishop takes f6. If knight takes f6, the pawn takes f6. We don't have time to take back because you just simply get mate. Okay. So he played bishop takes f6. Very, very strong move. Actually, if you take back with the pawn, then you're actually losing after this. Because you're just gonna get just gonna get mated and lose the bishop. So I don't know, maybe he thought he's just he's just winning and just missed this. Because if you take only four, still I think this is good for white. Takes queen f3, for example. Defends everything. Knight is hanging. 
if you go here, simply takes, and I think something like knight c6, yeah, knight c6, and then rook d8 should be able to win the game, okay? So here he goes, f6, knight f6. And now threat, uh, threat is on g2. So he played the move knight f3 to avoid getting mate. Now knight takes d1. He takes f6, threatening mate. And again, king h8. And again, if you don't have the threat here, knight g5 would have been actually a victory for Hans. But it just doesn't work. Takes rook g8, activating the rook. Now putting pressure here. The point here is if you take on f7, right? You just simply take rook takes g3, and then you're losing this, you're losing this with the check, and you're getting mated. Okay. So he goes king h2, queen e4 now. Logical move, centralizing the queen, and now have everything under control. B7. Queen e2, threatening mate on g2, queen h3, queen takes f3, picking up the knight, and now very nice finish at the end. Uh, there is still a threat here, so yeah, you can play maybe h5 and do something, but very, very nice win here, very tactical win here. Rook g2, check. If you go here, you simply made it. So you have to take back the queen and simply check. Back. Thank you very much. Up a rook and simply winning. So so this was an excellent win for Ray Robson. His first win of the tournament. So this could get Ray going and he's a very dangerous player. He has done well in this tournament before and has never won it, but it finished, I think, second or third a couple of times. So unfortunately, top loss for Hans. It's, uh, now he's at the, sitting at a minus one score. At the moment, we have uh, Fabiano Caruana leading with four and a half points out of six. And then there were a couple of players with three and a half only. There's nobody has four out of six. So we have Ray Robson, plus, plus one, three and a half. We have Awander Liang, plus one, three and a half. And we have Sam Savian, uh, plus, plus one, with three and a half out of six. So it looks good now for Fabiano. If he can continue winning a couple of more games, I think... He will have excellent chances to win this tournament. So some people are struggling. Dominguez hasn't won a game yet. Levon has a bad result so far. Uh, Wesley So also lost the game and drew one. So he's he's not doing well as well. So some of the top players are really, really struggling. So the only guy who is doing really well from that top four or five is Fabiano Caruana. So that's why it makes it like he's, this might be his tournament because his closest rivals are not, not doing well. But again, we're only six rounds in. This is a long tournament, guys. One of the longest tournaments, 13 rounds. So it will be interesting to see uh, who is going to come at the very top. So by uh, mid of mid next week, we'll find out the name of the 2022 US Chess Champion. So, so we have covered all the six rounds. So uh, the seventh round is going to be played actually today. And we'll be covering uh, all the recaps of that. And please make sure to tune in as well to see the U.S. Women's Championship, which is going on at the same time uh, with this tournament at the St. Louis Chess Club. So we'll be doing recap videos for the U.S. Women's Championship as well to make sure to tune in to the 1000 GM YouTube channel and subscribe and uh, put your like and uh, uh, leave us a comment if you have some uh, questions as well. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Have a good one.